There is a link to the voiceover free version of this video in the description. For now, let's get started. I had a really nice piece of wood that I wanted to turn into a table, and figured I'd love to put a cool wave pattern inlaid into the top. So I found a design and made a sketch to see what it would be like. I'm not a very good drawer, since my hands aren't very steady, but in my opinion at least, the sketch didn't actually look too bad. I figured it would look pretty nice on a table, and I even included the knot which you can see here. Then, I realised wood grain would be far nicer, and I completely abandoned the wave idea. Since this is one of my first non-laser projects, I grabbed a spare block of wood to use as practice. Using a Dremel, I tried multiple different bits to carve out the grain pattern. I should probably have looked up the best way to do this, but trial and error is always fun. <sighs> Dremels are quite a cheap and easy tool to get hold of and use, so this is pretty easy if you want to try it yourself. I used sandpaper to try and even the edges up and smooth the surfaces after I dug it out. Then I wrapped it in aluminium tape to prevent any resin from running over the edges. Aluminium tape is a great tool to keep around anyway, even if you're not using resin, and it's pretty cheap, so I'd recommend just getting some. When I was ready, I weighed out about 15 grams of polyester resin, added blue polyester pigment, although epoxy pigment should work, and finally used 2% catalyst to make it set, mixing thoroughly. I then spread this over the surface to fill my cracks in, and I tried being precise, but I unfortunately failed miserably, hence spreading all over the surface. When it was set, I removed away the foil, which does come apart quite easily, and then I vigorously sanded it to remove all of the excess resin. Since I don't have proper bench clamps, I used a makeshift setup that wasn't very effective. But eventually I got the job done and managed to get rid of all the resin that was uh, running over on the surface. Looks like Sanford Gloucestershire's finest are on the case. Go get them, Sergeant Angle. Unfortunately, I didn't go deep enough to get proper resin setting, which means the lines are very uneven and there are some spots where it's just wood with no resin set into it. But fortunately, that's what test runs are actually for. With that done, it was time to get on with the table. I sanded down the edge marked by the sawmill, but left some of the blue, since it was actually very pretty. I then got cracking on the engraving. I used a triangular bit to lay the lines first, followed by a ball burr bit to widen and deepen the cracks. This was a very, very tedious job, so just be grateful that this is actually about 165 times the speed that I was doing it at. I smoothed the top prior to adding the resin just to keep it mostly clean and even. I did the resin indoors to keep the dirt from getting in. I checked it was roughly level first, so that the resin didn't all pool at one end. And then I taped the ends, again to prevent any run over, and again with aluminium tape. I put down some tissue to stop resin ruining the table surface, and then I got everything ready to actually do the resin itself. This is the resin, catalyst, 
scales, glow powder, which in this case is aqua coloured, and mask and gloves. I very carefully opened the resin, and then I weighed out exactly 150 grams. I mixed in the powder and slowly added tiny amounts of pigment to tint it until I was happy. I decanted and added 1% catalyst to roughly 20 grams of the master mix at a time so that it didn't set too quickly on me, or at least that was the theory. I initially tried using syringes to be precise with the resin, but it wasn't very even and tended to get blocked with the nozzle. I kept going until all of the lines were filled. Near the end, I gave up and just spread it across the surface, which actually worked far better than trying to use the syringe, to be honest. After it was set, I started sanding. This is easily the very worst part, as it's tedious, uncomfortable, and generally unpleasant. I also burned through a fair number of discs, too. I initially started using P60s, despite having a handy supply of P40s nearby, P40 being a much coarser grit and would have burned through the resin far more quickly. Uh, foolishly, I completely forgot about them until right towards the end. I removed the knot part to redo it, since it hadn't sunk in very well. I also prepared the chip part at the top to get the resin in as well. Then, with a new batch as close to the old as I could manage, I went over any spots I wasn't happy with, and added resin to the chip and to the knot. These set very nicely. Again, I removed the excess. I also sanded down the sides to remove dirt and debris since this is a live edge and is therefore quite messy. I cleaned the bottom up where the saw blade left marks, and then I finished with 120 grit. I went up to 400 grit on the top, before smoothing out the edges and corners by hand. This is why I wear a mask when I'm doing sanding. I used slightly damp tissue to try and remove as much dust as possible to get a nicer finish. On the makeshift drying rack that you've seen before, I started the very best part. Oiling using my best and only friend, Osmo. I've already done the bottom, but that doesn't need as nice a finish, so I wasn't as worried about it. When dry, I buff it with 600 and 800 grit pads, and then repeat the oiling and buffing twice more. Including the sides and the ends. When that's done, I move up to 1000 grit, and then, finally, 1500 grit, to give it a very last final finish, which is absolutely gorgeous. The last stage is the legs. I'm using basic hairpin legs off eBay, but these don't quite fit on properly. I use three legs, since four would be likely very uneven. I move the legs to their final point, and marked it off for removal, to widen the stance as much as possible and make it more steady. Since these are made of a softer steel, it's easy for me to use an angle grinder with a metal cutting disc to remove the corners. I made sure to unplug the angle grinder while attaching the disc, but foolishly, didn't check it was off before plugging it in. Watch out for that. I did the angle grinding itself, which is a very messy, noisy, and hot business 
and also kind of scary. I then filed down to the mark and cleaned the cuts, removing any of the sharp edges. Take 2 was much cleaner, since I was out of practice. Again, I filed it clean, and then I prepared to attach it to the table. I checked the screws for the right size for holes and the wood, and then marked out and drilled the pilot holes. Lastly, I attached the legs properly. Voila, a finished table with a resin inlaid in the grain. Now being a proper Englishman, I broke the table in using the only acceptable method. A nice hot cup of tea. And a good book. Thank you for watching, and please try this at home, making sure to tidy up after yourself as well.